Hey friends, today on Gardening with Creekside, we are going to take a little tour of the production houses that are full of gorgeous annuals. We have not been up here um, in a couple of weeks, and so we wanted to give you an update on how everything is doing. Color is beginning to pop. So if you will remember, we are um, we potted up our first set of like the big order of annuals. Here in production two, our friends from Pleasant View Gardens delivered us a beautiful batch of annuals. And so this is um, this is the first round, really. Obviously, we have been down at retail here several times. You have seen those updates. So today, we wanted to show you how the production greenhouses are doing and then highlight some of those annuals that we have not talked about um, really a lot this year. And so lots of beautiful things, lots of flowers. Before we get too far into it, you will probably notice that the hanging baskets are filling in quite nicely. The cocoa line ones, these are 16 inch baskets and those all hold the recipes from Proven Winners. Proven Winners goes ahead and creates recipes of tried and true plants that work really well together and grow well together. That way it kind of takes a lot of thought out of the grower so we can just say, oh, we really like this. So that's a 16 inch basket. You can see the difference though, as far as like the growth on a 16 inch basket versus the 10 inch basket. Obviously, you've got six more inches in diameter in these cocoa line baskets as compared to the green plastic ones that are 10 inches. And you can see that the 10 inch ones are clearly gonna fill out faster because they have a smaller container. We like to grow nice, big, beautiful hanging baskets here at Creekside Nursery. These are not anywhere close to being the size that we like to have them when um, we bring them down to the retail garden center. Those of you who are just absolutely like itching to get your fingers on some annuals, I'm just going to caution you and say where we live in North Carolina, the Piedmont, right outside of Charlotte, Zone 7B, our last frost date is not until April the 15th. It is only early mid-March, right? And so we're on the, that side of it. We're supposed to be getting some freezing temperatures that are gonna be coming here in the next couple of days. So just be patient. I promise we have got tons of flowers for you. It is still too early to put out your annuals. Um, if you do, just know that you might be buying them again or you're gonna to need to bring them inside when we have those freezing temperatures. So a little word of caution, um, but we certainly do want to prime the pump for you a little bit. I'm gonna have Jerry back up just a couple of feet because there is a beautiful alyssum right here. This is Snow Princess and Snow Princess, my gosh, y'all, she is a fantastic plant. So it is a, that sweet alyssum, it is a lobularia. Snow Princess is gonna be pretty vigorous. Um, pure white blooms on it, very fragrant, and is a great either a ground cover or a trailing plant in a container. Now, this I have found for me personally can be a bit of a water hog. It does not respond well if it dries out and then you water it. It, it just takes it a long time to recover. It is fantastic though, if you've got an area that kind of stays damp or holds water, it, then it will just bloom its little head off all season long. Before we get too far into these, this is a nursery tour. I am not gonna be putting up all sorts of like big graphics and stuff. This is meant to give you an awareness of what we have here at the nursery. So if you want to learn more or see more, like you wanna see pictures, Go to provenwinners.com and simply type in the name of the plant. So you would just go to provenwinners.com and put in Snow Princess, and they're going to tell you all the specs that you have ever wanted to know. I'm going to be covering a lot of plants today in a very short amount of time, and so that is why we don't go um, in depth on these plants. We do those in other videos. Those are doing well. Of course, you see this nice little pocket of sunshine right here. The Goldilocks rocks, Bidens. Then you've got um, yellow just stands out. That's why, especially in the early spring or you, if you're planning on something from a distance, yellow is always a great color because it is so bright and vibrant and really does just kind of pop out um, from a distance. One of my 
favorite families of plants is the diamond euphorbias from proven winners these are euphorbias there are three yes there are three members of the diamond family this is diamond frost obviously you can see that there is a little bit of variation in growth here that is just normal because some plants just are a little bit more vigorous than others they were bigger when we got them um, and they all catch up it'll be just fine but diamond frost is going to be about 12 to 18 inches tall has a very open airy look to it this is a great annual for mixing in with containers or if you want to put it in the landscape it gives a very light airy um, look to the garden and the container when you pair it with petunias it's fantastic because the petunias and the diamond frost will intermingle with one another so you could have petunias randomly and then a little tuft of the diamond frost sticking up love this plant and it's going to be full to part sun does great in containers and landscape like i've already said love this one oh now this is a little early but we have got some lantana that is blooming and this is one of my favorites this is luscious citron um, we'll get a tag for you first so you can see that and on the tag where it has i think can you see um, that number right there that is your height so when you're looking at a proven winner's annual tag the number on the front tells you how tall it gets then the information on the back of the tag will give you all of you know your spacing the zones how you want to fertilize it what kind of light different features uh, you know everything you need to know about it is on the back of the tag that's why we love proven winners again because it does great tags look at citron is that not beautiful a very nice soft yellow so when we talk about yellow standing out sometimes yellows can be really bold and harsh in the landscape citron is a very nice soft buttery yellow it is not too vibrant for you so even if you're going with a very kind of the cool palette then um, citron is definitely one for you um, i think we're using this one in multiple landscapes favorite plant of all time that is highly underused are the surefire begonias and this is surefire red surefire red all the surefires is what you're going to get on the different plants is different colors you're going to get different flower color and you're going to get different um, foliage color but the surefires are not those begonias maybe that you grew up that were just the boring begonias these will do sun or shade and truly they do because i have grown them in both and everything in between in my landscape sure uh sun or shade container or landscape if you put it in the landscape it will get bigger because it has more room for the roots to grow just an absolute rock solid great plant don't really have to fertilize it very much you don't have to pinch it you don't have to deadhead it this truly is one that you can plant it get it watered for the first couple of weeks to get it established and then just leave it alone it will perform just magnificently well all throughout the season we do have there's rose i was looking here it is okay so here you can see so we always had red and rose so red obviously is a red flower with nice beautiful green foliage on it very nice and bright then next door we have rose rose obviously nice really pretty um, pink flowers with a darker foliage they're going to be the same height you're going to treat them the same way and everything is going to be the same as far as the care on it new this year we have surefire cherry cordial and surefire white this is cherry cordial it is not blooming yet it's going to have again dark foliage like your surefire rose but it's going to have a really bright bright red flower so it looks like a cherry cordial right so gorgeous grew these last year oh here's surefire white and surefire white she's not blooming yet either but it is going to be bright beautiful really nice bright green foliage with a pure white flower on it that has a yellow um, eye i really enjoyed these last year fantastic have plans for them as well again 
this year. Then we have the double ups. Double up begonias, another one of my favorites, nice and short and perfect little rounded um, mounds to it. But you will see that their blooms are smaller, but it is a double bloom, but the, it will be covering the entire plant. Sun or shade, extremely versatile. It can go in the landscape. It can go in the ground. If you want an easy peasy, don't have to think about it. Don't have to fuss over them. The surefire begonias and the double up begonias, hands down, easiest plant, highest performing plant, love them for sure. Because we all have seasons in our life where we can't devote as much time to our gardens. These are the plants that you want this year. You don't want high maintenance, you want easy. So that is definitely the easy, and look, oh my goodness. It's so incredible yellow. Look at that. This is of course the re-blooming sunflower. Look at that first little sweet bloom on that. A little teeny tiny plant, but man, she says, I'm just gonna go ahead and put out a flower. Even has a bud next door. Um, these, when you put them in the landscape, they do get nice and big. We found for ours, they were easily that three feet to four feet tall and wide. The more you trim them and you cut your flowers, bring them, bring them inside, put them in vases. The more you trim it, the nice and tighter and, and thicker your plant will get and the more flowers it produces because they bloom on new growth. So we will actually have somebody come through here and snip these little flowers because we want them to be sturdy. We don't want them to be straight up. So when you cut it, right, like we always do, you wanna cut it right here where that leaf is and you just snip it off and then it will branch. That means you get two more branches instead of just the one creates a nice, strong, sturdy stem um, of a plant and really grows well and produces more flowers. Coffee cups, elephant ears. Um, this is always a huge seller at the nursery. Coffee cups was uh, introduced into the Proven Winter line three years ago, four years ago, somewhere around there. And coffee cups actually for us will be a perennial. It is listed on the back as a perennial in zones 8A to 11B. As a 7B though, um, mine has come back faithfully from the very first year that I planted it. And when I planted it, it was a grande size container. It was not a big, huge, massive one. It was a grande. It is now ginormous and makes a huge, beautiful presence. It's called coffee cups, nice dark stems. It will have the leaves are upturned and it cups. It'll collect the water, and then when it gets heavy filled with water, it'll tip, boop, and drop out the water. So if you are a regular at Creekside, you always look for coffee cups. We have got them. We're getting ready to go into coleus land over here. Um, but before we hit coleus land, we have, oh, this is probably my favorite shade annual. I think I could safely say that. This is Endless Illumination Broalia. And it is, again, a nonstop bloomer. It is for the shade. You can handle a couple of hours of morning sun. That is not a problem. Or, you know, dappled sun throughout the day. Um, but the Endless Illumination is this beautiful blue purple flower. It will get to be 12 to 16 inches tall and basically wide forms this beautiful mound and covered in these flowers. Gorgeous. There is endless flirtation, which is a white. We have it around here somewhere. Um, but this is my favorite. I always will pull at least a tray and have them and put them in my shade gardens. Just amazing, amazing plant. All right, now here we are in coleus land. Um, we have a little plant that fell over there. Coleuses are, I think, one of the most underused annuals in gardens. The Color Blaze series from Proven Winners, again, can do sun or shade. You're gonna get a little bit of color variation if you put that plant in full sun and that same plant in full shade. You're gonna get a little bit of color differences, but they will still thrive and do wonderful. 
For the most part, your coleuses in the landscape can get to be about three feet tall. I mean, they'll get, or even more, right? They get ginormous. The more sun, um, or not really even the sun, the more water you give them, the more fertilizer you give them, the bigger and the happier they get. Make a huge statement in the landscape. There are some though that don't get massive, they trail. So for example, we have chocolate drop. Chocolate drop, strawberry drop, and then um, coming out next year is cherry drop. These are trailing coleuses. And if you don't believe that they trail, well, I can assure you that they do. The chocolate drop has more of, of course, that green with that darker center, a little bit of a deep purple and with some hints of red in there, but it will trail up to, gosh, mine, like 18 inches, 18 to 24 inches. Really nice. It will get some height to it and then it just kind of spreads out and trails over. New this year, um, of course, is the uh, Mini Me Watermelon. These are going to be for hours that are going to be growing in our gardens. That's why they don't have a tag, because they're going to be for our consumption. But the Mini Me Watermelons are going to be short. They're only, since I don't have a tag, it's like 12 to 18 inches, I want to say. Nice and short, really frilly. If you watched any of our videos last year with garden tours, you will know that this was Jerry's probably favorite new introduction that is coming out this year. It, of course, is fantastic. Now, we're going to run through different colors. Basically, with your coleus, you're going to treat them all the same as far as care. Sun or shade, landscape or containers, large containers because they can get really big. And it really is about the color. What color do you want? What color goes with your, your plans for that year? Um, so in this tray, we have two different ones. We have apple brandy, which is here in the front. It is a beautiful red and chartreuse color. Um, a little bit more frilly. It has those kind of those ruffled edges, more of an elongated leaf that is, um, has that serrated edge to it. And then we have Ridiculous. Ridiculous, obviously, is going to be a beautiful red coleus, hence its name. Really fantastic. I always want you to think about, you know, planting. Um, coleuses are great, especially for your fall containers, but don't just think fall because they're, they're wonderful, um, just depending on what you're doing. Sedona Sunset is one of my absolute favorites. It truly does change color with the, um, with the sun and the shade. If you put it, and I can't remember which one, so forgive me. If you put it in one condition it's really red if you put it in one it's really orange here in the greenhouse because the greenhouse the plastic does have uv protection so you can see that it is a beautiful kind of that coppery orange with that little bit of the chartreuse on the edges fantastic color in this plant um, without a doubt then this was new on the market last year uh, newly noir almost yeah newly noir almost a solid black really deep 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 purple when it gets in that full uv light it will turn nearly black so this is a beautiful one uh we've got let's see oh then um one of my favorites that i use all the time well we'll get it over there is golden dreams is a great one now we've talked about diamond frost now look here we have diamond snow euphorbia We've got some leaves that have blown in. So diamond snow is still going to be that pure white, but you can see how much tighter um, and more compact it is than diamond frost. Diamond snow, I tell people, if you want to have a nice solid pocket of white, whether in a container or the landscape, then diamond snow is the plant for you. It's going to be the same height as diamond frost. Diamond frost, really light and airy and fluffy snow tight big pocket of white in in your garden or your container um sweet potato vines these are always so popular um this particular ones we have the proven accents sweet caroline sweetheart lime and then um, bewitched after midnight both of these will have um well, there's Bewitched After Midnight, and then there's Jet Black. So, sorry about that. So, on your sweet potato vine, basically, you're either going to have like a heart-shaped 
leaf on it or you're going to have more like a serrated kind of a oak leaf maple leaf look to it um, but basically it's like what color do you want do you want to go with the, the light green the chartreuse green or do you want to go with the dark black also makes a wonderful ground cover so if you're looking for a ground cover that is one look at these mini vistas mini vista hot pink huge fan of the mini vista whole line because you get beautiful flowers on them but they're not as vigorous as your vistas so they're not going to spread as aggressively which is really nice if you're looking in tight spaces or just a normal size container then your mini vistas are going to be wonderful your vistas are great i love vistas i use them all the time they're the best for your landscape where you have big open spaces or a really large container because they just kind of go everywhere. Um, so this is the Mini Vista Hot Pink. And then probably my favorite, well, I can't say that. I use it a lot though, Mini Vista White. Mini Vista White is just a pure white flower. I use this a lot around our patio in on the back porch. Um, so I'm gonna be using this again a ton this year. And these petunias have a, just a lovely um, fragrance to them, very light. Your pollinators love them. Oh, just such fantastic, beautiful plants. Now this is a Vista, this is Vista Fuchsia. And you can see that it has, it truly is a fuchsia flower. So if you're looking anywhere in your landscape to cover big areas with small numbers of plants, then your Supertunia vistas are the ones for you. So this is fuchsia and we're gonna come over here because our beloved bubble gum is blooming as is the new jazzberry. So jazzberry is new on the market last year was the first year out and it really is kind of that raspberry more of a purple look to it gorgeous if you remember our tours at pleasant view gardens in new hampshire how they have the pergola and they have planters on the top of the pergola it's the last two years i think has been jazzberry massive huge color but in my opinion the um the ultimate like the queen of the vistas and petunias in general, in my humble opinion, is bubblegum. These are just starting to bloom. That's why we have just kind of some sporadic blooms here. And it truly is that classic bubblegum pink. Beautiful. You can see such nice big flowers on them. Covers huge amounts of area. Just keep in mind, your super tunias, whether they're the vistas, the regulars, or the mini vistas, they tend to be heavy feeders. That means that you're going to need to fertilize them more frequently. If you put them in the landscape, they, re they respond really well to being amended. Like with your compost and your good organic material, the more food that you can give them, the happier they're going to be, the healthier they're going to be, and the more flowers you are going to get. So we've got those, and then, um, I mean, there's just, oh my gosh, there's just, they're everywhere. Um, another great shade plant, my people who have shade, whether it is for the landscape or it is for a container. I am a massive fan of the Rockapucos. Rockapuco is a double impatient. Now they're not blooming, but they do have buds popping up. They come in a wide range of colors. Here we have wisteria, which is a beautiful kind of a marbled purple. And then in the back, there's two roses, which is a classic pink. A lot of times people will see these and they think that they're like a, like a miniature rose, but they're not. They're just, they're an impatient. They do love the shade. So you're gonna need to put these, if they get a couple hours of sun, it needs to be morning sun only, not hot afternoon sun here in North Carolina. They will fry. Um, nice, consistent moisture. They don't like to dry out. And the good thing is you really don't have to, you know, feed your impatience very much. So we have got, there's a, there is, um, there is white, there is red, there is coral, there is apple blossom. Apple blossom is, might be my favorite color because 
It is just a very, very soft, kind of a baby doll pink, a little bit of white in there, but very pale in color, very elegant, very soft, very light. So Apple Blossom is, is a great one. Back to Coleus just for a minute because we're on the other side of where the other Coleuses were. Torchlight. Torchlight is really fun because it's really got three colors on there. You've got the predominant color is a nice, dark, rich, deep, deep purple, kind of a maroon. Then you'll have the edges of your leaves will have more green with little flecks in that very center of some hot pink. This is a beautiful coleus when it is in maturity as it's growing because you have those colors against this nice dark backdrop. Super nice. Remember I told you we had um, chocolate drop and strawberry drop? Well, here is strawberry drop. Strawberry drop, as you can see, is a, is a brighter chartreuse green with a little bit of white and then that pink in there. So you've got lots of beautiful colors in here, lighter in color than chocolate drop. Steel trails, wonderful. Now, if you are looking for um, a big contrast in colors between like two different coleuses, I use this combination all the time. Feel free to steal it, I don't mind. You can borrow it, you can claim it as your own idea. Either way works for me, um, but Lime Time Coleus with Wicked Witch. And Wicked Witch, again, is relatively new within the last four years, I would say. But when you plant these two together, and they're gonna get the same height, so you can plant them however you want, they just pop off of each other incredibly nice because you've got that solid chartreuse of the lime thyme then you've got wicked witch with the dark center and then that kind of that same chartreuse edge on it gorgeous we use this at the entrance to the nursery last year along with some purple fountain grasses and um, then we had sun patients down there at the bottom it was a beautiful beautiful display of color because remember in your garden, you want heights, colors, and textures. And color does not always have to equal flowers. You can have gorgeous color without flowers. I know it's crazy, but you can do it. Um, our Gumfrina is growing. Gumfrina, the truthful of pink, is a wonderful pollinator um, attractor, especially your butterflies. I believe this is the annual of the year this year, right? Yes, okay. Annual of the year this year, um, we grow them in gallons and in the grandes, obviously the gallons take a little bit longer to fill in, but you can see that that is a very nice, happy plant growing really well. Um, we do that because typically we will sell the grandes first, they finish faster, and then as the heat of the summer hits, then these gallons um, will be ready because the gumfrina has a great root system really drought tolerant once you get it established. Um, vertigo grasses, vertigo grass is, if you are looking for a really big impact, a statement piece in your garden, and you've got sun, then you want vertigo grass. Vertigo grass is, as far as I know, the largest purple fountain grass out there on the market, it is an annual. People always get so upset with me at the end of the season when we rip out vertigo. And I'm like, y'all, it is not gonna survive the winter. It is an annual. We have left it before, it does not come back. So just hold your horses and settle down, people. It is an annual. But my gosh, this will be the best money you've ever spent on an annual because literally at the end of the season, my vertigos were taller than I am massive, huge, deep purple. And you're like, Jenny, that's not purple, that's green. Yes, because this is in the UV protected greenhouse. When it gets in the full sun, it turns that deep, deep purple. An exquisite plant, the more water you give it, the faster and the bigger it grows. So we have those. These we only put in gallons because actually by the time, um, I don't know, is that by like June or something? The roots are like coming out of this plant already. Look at that. Here it is March. We have roots right there coming out. 
this is the most vigorous plant. So uh, get it in the ground the earlier you can. And now when I say early, I mean past your frost date, people. I don't mean now. Um, and then it will just be extremely happy. Let's see, what else have we not talked about? Ooh, I know what we have not talked about. Vermillionaire. Now, Vermillionaire is this whole block right here. Vermillionaire is the number one plant that we sell if you want to have hummingbirds in your garden. We've got a bud or two, but we don't have any flowers yet. So let me just show you Vermillionaire. Literally, people will come to the, to the garden center and they're like, I want that hummingbird plant. I know exactly what you're talking about. You want Vermillionaire. Um, ooh, there is a little bud right here. Um, also known as a firecracker plant. Kufia is the um, botanic name for it. And what it does is these nice little tubular blooms. Um, obviously that's the baby. That are nice bright orange. The blooms don't open up huge like a petunia. They're very narrow. And so the hummingbirds can get in there and get all that sweet, delicious nectar. Not only do the hummingbirds love this, but if you're looking for any kind of pollinator, they cover this plant. It is going to be for full sun. And if you put it in the landscape, it's going to grow bigger than obviously in a pot, anywhere from 18 to 28 inches tall and your spacing is about 12 to 18 inches on this. In the landscape, I personally like to plant them in like groups of three, kind of in a triangle. So it looks like I have one massive plant because I just, my garden is so big. Sometimes if I just put a plant, it just gets lost. So I will plant like three together and then I'll do maybe three of those within a flower bed. So I have three groups of this massive vermillionaire. So that helps out a lot. It is an annual. Sometimes people will have it come back if we have a very mild winter. Um, obviously we do sell this as an annual, but people will literally come back year after year and buy this. And it is the number one for hummingbirds, in my opinion. More lantana. I'm a huge fan of lantana. Again, I think it's really underused. This is luscious citrus blend. Citrus blend has on the same flower, it will have yellow, it will have orange, it will have red, beautiful colors, 20 to 30 inches tall. Depending on your lantana, it will depend on the size, right? So your mature size will differ from plant to plant, cultivar to cultivar. When you buy your lantana, especially in the spring in the garden center, it may not be too much bigger than this because they love it hot. The hotter, the happier they are. This is what you want to plant in the spring, early summer, because in late summer, early fall, this is when they are shining. The rest of your garden is tired and sad, and we're like, we're done. Lantana's like, woohoo! The party is just getting started, and they provide massive amounts of color for sure. Um, everything else, I think we have covered at some point um, here or there. So I think we're gonna go uh, back up. No, no, Jerry says we're done. <laughs> it is, y'all, we keep it real around here. It is Friday afternoon, it's getting late, we're tired. So Jerry's like, I'm done, Jenny, we're, we're done. Um, but just know, especially just thinking of when you visit your local garden center, Keep in mind about when is your last frost date. And if you don't know when your last frost date is, Google it, Professor Google. When is the last frost date for, and put your zip code in. It will bring it up. Again, ours is right around that April the 15th. You can look ahead, of course, because of fantastic weather forecast, about a two week window, right? And so for me, I'll start checking the first of April and see how things are going. Now that is not an assurance that you're not gonna have a late frost or freeze. We have had you know, a frost freeze a month after our last frost date. At that point, you need to be prepared to protect any of these annuals for those cold temperatures because the vast majority of them will not survive. And so you just need to be prepared. What I recommend to people is when you're at the nursery, 
and you're buying shrubs or maybe like perennials in a larger container, save those containers because if you have lantana in the ground and it's nice and small and you're gonna get a frost or a freeze, take that one gallon perennial pot, turn it upside down and just place it on top of the plant. If you have no wind, you don't need to do anything. If you're gonna have lots of wind, just get a rock and stick on top of it and it holds it down. That will be enough protection typically to protect your plant. Now, if you're getting down to like, you know, two degrees, then obviously it's not gonna protect it. Um, but just be aware, I'm trying to save you some money here so that you don't buy plants two or three times in a season because it does happen. Um, but visit your local garden center, make sure you come with a list because when you get to the garden center, odds are you're gonna get overwhelmed and you're gonna be like, give me all the plants. And then you're gonna get home and you're like, I have nothing that goes together. Like what in the world was I thinking? So try to come up with a plan, not saying that you have to stick only to your plan, but that way at least you get the plants that you know that you really want. Um, Creekside is here to help. We are open Wednesdays through Saturday, nine to three. Everybody repeat after me. Wednesday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Are we open till five? No. <laughs> Do we want to help you, uh, you know, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m.? Yes, we want to help you as much as we possibly can. So we look forward to seeing you. Those hours will be from now until we close in December or whenever it is that we close. So just count on Wednesday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And as always, thanks so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a great day. If you have any questions, go to provenwinners.com. It'll show you all the information you need to know. We appreciate you. Have a great day. Bye, friends.